Now let's introduce my co-founder, our CTO, Simon. Simon, are you here? I think you're I'm in, here. You're there. You're in <laughs> you're in Oslo. So it's cold and dark and snowy. Uh, yeah, it, it is. Oh, let's see. Here we go. I have actually have a live camera. You I think this is uh, my camera. Of course, my garden. You have, <laughs> you have this could be this could actually be the Bay Area. Well, maybe you should have more colored lighting for it to be the Bay Area. I guess the uh, Americans exactly. like their, their, their Christmas lights. Yeah. <laughs> but as you know, like in Norway, this is a great time to be for, for, for my kids to, to play outside in the in the toasty weather. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, a little bit of remarkable content for you right there. <laughs> that was very situation specific. I love it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's look into the metadata later. Exactly. So or you would have actually made that whole thing insanity just to prove the point. Um, <laughs> it's all, all powered by my, 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 my kids' structured content. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. No, that was amazing. I feel I'm going to say composable and amazing a lot today, and people will just have to live with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think the whole industry is going this way. You know, we we spoke about spoke a lot about this, Simon, and and uh, I think I think we we're going to see composable not only um, for uh, content, but we, we're going to see this also for um, other other applications, and it, and it ties into a general trend. And that's why I would call it an era. Because I think what we've been talking about for years, not so much us, but others about headless, it's 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 really bragging about having APIs in 2020. And, mm -hmm. and it's kind of besides the point uh, that should definitely yeah. be taken as as for granted. And we need to move, we need to move beyond that and talk about this composability. So I think that's uh, I think that's great. Should mm -hmm. we talk about some customers? Yeah, like uh, I think you have a did I have, have a slide. Did you, Should we did you bring make that slide? up again? Yeah, yeah, yeah you I, have to. I, made a little to... Sl I, yeah. I love this one. I, I love this one as well. And I wanted to, to, to show it and, and bring it up so we could talk about it because it is amazing. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's terrific to see how these large organizations uh, have started using sanity and thinking in a more composable way. And, and we are really proud to see people using this in very many different ways and forms. We have the more... Um, e-commerce or consumer-centric brands like Burger King and AT&T and Puma and Skims um, that use this to launch product, but also drive the experience that all customers, customers have. We have a lot of media companies, and I don't think we mentioned too many on this slide here, but people who, who really changed the way they work about distributing content. Morning Brew is an example we used, we used many times. We're also really proud to have all these innovative um, uh, Silicon Valley companies with Figma and Pinterest, Amplitude Brex, and Spotify, although to our Swedish friends there, it's kudos to them. Um, and they really um, were early on seeing this composable trend. I think many of them would say, we have been thinking like this for some years already and doing things. And I think they have, I think they, but I, I think they could do more. And I think we have a lot of examples. If you think we got 300,000 projects and almost 300,000 people have tried Sanity at this point. We deliver 50 million documents and a petabyte of data. You know, there are a lot of great examples already about how this is being used. Yeah, no, I, I feel like this total fanboy sometimes. I mean, the, the companies we've had, and we, we got some of these customers really early. So I think that the thing here is like some people, like this wasn't completely rocket science. People have been thinking about this for, for some time. Like we didn't mm -hmm. know about this word when we kind of conceptualized Sandy, but we knew what we kind of hated. We knew what we needed to fix. Uh, and and as, as for example, Burger King, as they saw what we were doing, they kind of signed on really early. Like uh, I think the, <laughs> too early maybe, but like we, we pulled it off and we, 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 we we, we pulled through together, but that's that, that's kind of where we are now. Like these are companies who really are forward leaning and really understand this and and are building. Like some of these companies have like huge, very complicated solutions built on Sanity. So one thing that's kind of easy to forget in this picture is that Sanity is also really great for incredibly small projects and really fast tactical projects. So one thing we need to actually kick, get started on right now because we have a team that is going to do a hackathon during this event. So, so they, they, they are, <laughs> yeah, they are, they're raring <laughs> Why to <not>? go. <laughs> exactly. So, so I think let's, let's, let's get them started. So they, because they need their time, but, uh, Runa and team, are you, are you, are you ready to go? Hi, Steven. We're just getting set up here. Uh, we have uh, assembled a great team today. We have Lydia Infante, senior SEO manager. We have Kayla Kalpas, product designer. We have Cody, creative coder, front-end engineer. 
And I am Rune, I work in solution engineering. Sanity is great for smart and fast projects too. It's simple to get started and you only need a basic content model. This year we launched our collaboration with Shopify and today we're launching Studio V3 that among other things make development faster and teamwork smoother. So Lydia, what are we making today? We are making a personality test slash limited edition Sanity Swag Store. Because B3 has so many features, I feel like everybody is going to have a favorite new feature. Um, so I've designed a um, personality test that's going to classify each user into what type of Sanity user they are. Um, and we're going to be finding you the right SWAC for you. Do you want to tell us more about that, Kayla? Yeah, definitely. So what we'll be focusing on is building that shopping experience itself. So the test, how it's going to guide you towards the right purchases. And in order to get this done fast, what's most important is getting everyone unblocked. So the first order of business is setting up our content model. And that's something that Cody's going to be taking care of for us. Yes, and I am very excited for this because uh, I've been working with V3 a lot, but never with Hydrogen. So we're using Aqua, um, the Aqua template we released earlier this year. Uh, and we are putting a Sanity Studio and V3 Studio inside of it. And what that gives us is everything is in one place, in one project. So we can move really uh, quickly uh, on this, this fun new stuff. We don't want to spend any time on boring stuff. We're here to have fun and work on the personality test. So all you need to do, uh, all, all we need to do in this team when we work at this is run one command, gets us everything up and running. So we have the store running on uh, localhost. It's empty right now because we're just getting started. Same is through for the studio. So there's, there's nothing here yet, but it's a clean canvas ready to go. And uh, we can now start working on the, the fun stuff. That's it from us. Hack it from out. That's amazing. So we'll be checking back soon. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of our smaller customers. Uh, I mean, those logos are amazing. We're so proud of that. But also, our thousands of smaller customers are kind of amazing. And I spent some time preparing for this event, just looking at our list of customers, trying to find out what they were doing. And I actually discovered seven different uh, food delivery services. I've been using two of those without knowing that they are sanity powered. One to deliver a breakfast, uh, like a birthday breakfast to my dad. And another one is my, my source of like a rare Mexican uh, kind of hot sauce. It turns out, out that my online doctor is also sanity powered. They helped me figure out my knee last year when I fell on the bike. So it turns out my life is being touched by sanity in ways I didn't even know about. But actually what I want to talk about also is just companies doing like visually pleasing stuff and having that powered by structured content with with sanity so let's get a browser up here so i wanted to look at this i discovered this i didn't know about this record company it's apparently it's founded by david byrne of of talking heads i guess he this is a legendary person and this is just beautiful i just found this this whole page this site is just inspiring. It kind of reminds me of the olden days when like websites were cool and, and interesting and you were exploring and discovering stuff on websites. Uh, and this gives me that sweet feeling. I think I saw actually like Alice Coltrane is here. I mean, she's fantastic. Anyway, beautiful stuff. Uh, pretty simple, but uh, effective and, and beautifully designed. Another one I found, is, I think this is like a, a VC company. I think it has sound, so be be warned. Uh... <laughs> so I think this is amazing. The fabric of the future. And I'm going to explore the future and my cursor turns into this black hole or force field and I can explore the future and look at this. I mean, this is amazing. Nice. Spare no expense. And I let's, let's me just, I guess this is their their portfolio of companies, I'm assuming. And clearly, like, this is... Let's go here. Oh, yes! WebGL can never go wrong with that. Anyway, next thing is amazing in a different 
maybe more whimsical way, demo stack. It's a SaaS company helping you kind of create demos of other SaaS companies' products. And I just found this nice and whimsical and inspired and ah, it makes me want to try it out. Like, and yeah, looking at this, it makes me very proud that this is powered by Sanity. We should check this out. Yeah, nice. And then uh, last one I want to look at this is this. <laughs> and I mean, some of the companies uh, using our freemium offering aren't small companies. I think this is Dow Jones and, and, and Wall Street Journal. And some of these other companies are like billion dollar companies who are just expanding their business, ex exploring new ways of expressing themselves. And I guess this is like a valiant, valiant uh, experiment. I mean, here is a, this is an NFT gallery. It's full 3D and you, it's game style controls. And I can go around and if I kind of approach an image, it will kind of go enter some kind of focus mode. And now I'm kind of just admiring that picture. And I can then go, I guess I can, oh, maybe it supports VR. I should go get my Oculus. Anyway, this is kind of, I don't know, kind of, I don't know, is this the future of art? Unsure. Is it kind of bold and beautiful? Yes, I think so. This is amazing. Anyway, as you all know, today we're launching Sanity Studio V3 in general availability, meaning it's now recommended for use in production systems. So that's a deep rewrite of our entire studio application where we took everything that has to do with creating custom content authoring experiences to the next level. And in about 45 minutes, we will meet some of the developers behind this whole project, look at the specific features that are part of V3 and the thinking and the engineering that went into this new stage in our product evolution. But <clears throat> first, I want us to take a look at how Sanity and the Studio V3 is creating value out in the world right now. One thing that was really important to us when building V3 was supporting organizations that want to bring all of their teams, their properties, their workflows, their kind of various tools into one integrated experience. And Carolina and team has put together this demo showing that in action. So Carolina, take it away. Hi there, I'm Carolina Gonzalez. I'm on the solutions engineering team here at Sanity, where we work closely with enterprise clients, some of them in the media space. And I'm also a former writer and editor myself. So that's why I'm really excited to present this media demo for you today. Um, it combines some of the patterns and flows that we've seen from some of our existing customers, along with some things that I wish I had when I worked on these teams, and also some ideas that we haven't quite seen out there in the wild yet that we think are good ideas. And those are features that are enabled by some of our recent Sanity releases and also some of the new Studio V3 features. So without further ado, I'd love to start showing the demo. Uh, what we're looking at here is a fairly straightforward kind of news site with a tech angle. Um, nothing really out of the ordinary here, really just articles that are coming from Sanity um, with all the features that you'd expect. Um, if we click into an article, again, we won't be greeted with too many surprises. We've got a headline here. Uh, we've got the intro text that is used everywhere we're linking to this article, uh, cover image used in the same way. But really the bulk of our focus here is gonna be in the content itself. This is what we're delivering to our readers. This is what we know engages our readers. So we wanna make sure we have a really great experience here. Um, we are doing some things that are structured. We've got things that are used as metadata, like assigning sections or categories to our articles, or assigning people who are involved in the creation of this article to this article. But really, our focus is on content. And that same philosophy will be reflected in the underlying studio for this particular site. I'll jump into an article now uh, to kind of show you what I mean. If I jump into this article here, you'll see not a lot of surprises. Again, we've got a title that we're using. We've got a slug that can be derived from our title or custom if we think that's better for SEO um, and really all the fields that, that kind of make sense for this particular piece of content. But where we're going to be doing most of our work in the creation of content is here in our portable text editor. Um, so we can still, despite the simplicity of our model, we can still provide some really great editorial affordances. And I hope to show you what I mean. 
first of these is preview. Uh, even though I'm using my content in a structured way and I've got good validations, it's still really satisfying to be able to see how my changes might look on my front end. So we've allowed that here in this preview pane that I'm opening up to the right. Um, and we're using just an Next.js uh, sanity preview package that is widely available. You can open up our editor and start making changes and see them reflected in real time. Those changes might be stylistic. Um, they might be text-based or anything else. All of those are going to be reflected. But regarding the actual content itself, we can also give ourselves some, some great tooling here. Uh, we might want to have greater sort of creative control over how our content is presented. So for example, I've got this image here. If I wanted to make some changes, let's say switch it out for a different image that I think makes more sense in this context, I can do so. And also just hotspot and crop it. So if I wanted to ensure that this particular kind of tableau of laptop and lamp are always in view, I can do so. And I also will be rest assured that all of these particular uh, aspect ratios will also respect that hot spotting and cropping. I don't have to have a bunch of different crops that have one single source of truth that can be used across everywhere this particular piece of content is being used. To that same point, we might also want to, for the service of our readers, uh, be able to keep them clicking, be able to keep serving them content that makes sense for them. In this case, I wanted to, for example, link to another article that I know they'll be interested in because they're reading this article. And that might be something around, let's say, the metaverse. Uh, that callout box and that link is really just going to work. Uh, no having to track down URLs or search or, or be able or have to worry about this particular URL being out of date if it changes. We have integrity here. This should always sort of be a trusted way to think about how we can keep people clicking, keep them interrelated between the content that makes sense for them um, without having to think about being a developer or, or worrying about how this uh, might render on the front end. Once I'm ready for this particular article to go out, I can do a number of things here. I could promote it to a different stage in my workflow. I can schedule it to go out. Um, but let's go ahead and see where it sits in my current workflow. If I open up this sort of Kanban view here for my workflow plugin, we'll see that it's in review. It's ready to be sort of signed off by the people who are responsible for that. And I can also see where this sits in the kind of greater galaxy of my content. I can see that, okay, it's gonna go out around the same time as these articles and plan accordingly. Um, the same for my schedule. So I'm using my scheduled publishing plugin to see what's going out and where things, uh, are. I can see the sort of agenda viewpoint, but also sort of focus in and see, oh, okay, these things are happening on the 14th of December. All this tooling just really helps your editors understand what's going on and make sense of the, the teams that they're working with. Um, teams might work on different kinds of content, even in the same studio space. We've been focusing on articles, but we also have newsletters and podcasts here. This is another thing that we've noticed from our current media customers is that very few people are just working on pushing things out to one channel, often they're multi-channel. And it makes sense to serve those users too. So if I jump into my newsletter, for example, um, my newsletter team will might be working on their own newsletters, but they might wanna take advantage of the great content I have elsewhere. So I have a sort of schema for a newsletter here and I've got my content, um, but I also have a couple of uh, custom inputs here. So I have a, a little sort of call out to push something to MailChimp so that my content still lives in sanity as a source of truth, but can be serialized and pushed to other services whenever I want it to. And down here in my content itself, I can also take advantage of the articles that my, my article writers are writing. I want to make sure that I'm alerting my readers to the new content that's come out since my last newsletter was published. And I have this nice little pull in new articles button. And if I go ahead and give it a click, it will give me an array of references to all the articles that came out since my last newsletter was published. Um, to that same point, we can also, again, have a satisfaction of being able to see how this newsletter will look in inboxes and email safe HTML, uh, even with this kind of rich content here of these sort of previews of, of articles that are coming out and we want to highlight to our readers. Um, that said, that particular sort of use of content across various channels can also go the other way. If I jump back into an article, for example, and 
really want my readers to know about this cool new podcast I'm working on, I can do so. If I jump into my content here, let's go ahead and open a preview so we can see this happen in real time, very satisfying. So if I jump here and then add a podcast, I can just search against my, my data set here, find a podcast that makes sense. And without having to do any code, without having to track down a URL, it should just render. I still have my, my single source of truth in my sanity data set, but I can just allow this sort of smart player to appear right in the article itself. My readers have no further clicks to do. If they're interested in this podcast, they'll press play. And I, as a content creator, have succeeded in, in allowing my readers to know about this cool new thing I'm working on. That same philosophy can go towards also featuring things uh, to highlight them, for example. So if I jump into the settings page, for example, I can feature particular articles. But something else I can feature that might make sense is something like a review. Uh, so if I go ahead and search against my my reviews. I have one here for a record player. I'm going to give it a title that makes sense because I want people to click. So let's say the best tips for vinyl lovers. And that should just show up as we see here. My title is working, but I also have some content that's coming from my reviews team. Uh, this using this connected content is kind of a key feature of being able to have various teams working in Sanity. We want to be able to provide the tooling and the flows that make sense for each team, but also be able to use all the great content that's being produced by other teams. I'll show you a little bit about what I mean if we go to a different vertical. I'm going to go up to the right, to the left here, to see my workspace switcher and switch over to my lifestyle vertical. If I jump into the settings here, you'll see that same pattern of being able to feature various different pieces of content on the front page. But that same preview is going to show the branding and, and other sort of imagery that makes sense for this particular vertical, these particular readers. We've assigned that same record player uh, review to the music section of this magazine. That's where it makes sense for this team. This team also doesn't have the same amount of tooling. They don't have scheduling. They don't have workflows. They're a smaller team and they're working more intimately. And we're pulling in content that actually also doesn't come from this particular workspace. We're actually pulling from, in this example, we're imagining a third team, a team who's working only on reviews that maybe haven't migrated to Sanity yet, but are going to. And when they do so, they, and without even doing so, they can just sync their content into the content lake. What that means is that even when content changes, so if I were to, for example, say that that particular, uh, record player has been sold out and we want our readers to know that regardless of where they are, we can actually just click in and see that that particular review is marked as sold out and that's reflected everywhere. If I go ahead and open up my preview again, even though I've overridden my title, uh, you'll see that same sold out function here because my review team has updated that review, it's synced to the content link and everywhere it's being used, we still have that same sense of referential integrity. We still have that same source of truth. And that's everywhere it's being used, including that technology vertical where we first added this. If we go back to our settings document, we'll see that we have the sort of same sold out flag here. And even in when we're serving our end users, our readers, we see that same sold out here. And even in the rich text, we have, a, we have an update. Uh, that's coming from just being able to sync things live to the content lake, even from teams who aren't working in Sanity yet. Uh, and that's really the key thing to notice here is that we are providing customized workflows for different teams, teams who are working in the ways that they want to, but also being able to use each other's content. So we have this sort of wealth of content that we're able to use across various teams without forcing one team to work in one way or another way. Uh, we're able to just connect it, treat it as a single source of truth, and not force our editors to have to track things down or sync things. It should all happen automatically and, and be a really pleasant experience to work in. And I hope you take some ideas from this and I hope you enjoyed this particular demo. Uh, thank you for listening. Amazing, thank you, Carolina. So we see this with a lot of our media customers, but all kinds of organizations could really benefit from bringing their teams together in a similar unified fashion. Thinking of teams, let's check back with our hackathon crew. How are you doing? We're fine, Sudan. Uh, we're making some headway. I'll share my screen here and I'll show you. Uh, see? So we've added some content models to uh, work out our personality test. 
we can add some questions, we can add some answers. There's a whole point scoring system that we are developing inside there. Um, what I thought I'd do now is to add an image <laughs> field here so that we can have a nice background image for, for each of the questions. So I go into the, the content model. I'll add a field of type image, just name it image as well. Uh, there we go. And now we have this field here, which we can use to add images. So I'm going to push this out to the rest of the team, deploy it, uh, and then hand it off to Lydia to, uh, to look at creating the content for that personality quiz. So let's see. Uh, not very good with commit messages, but there we are, add image. That is on its way now. Uh, and we'll hand it off to Lydia. Nice. Uh, all right, I have a bit of a nicer studio. Like I have it in dark mode, like a normal person. Kind of... <laughs> it's by morning, it, okay? Like, full white. <laughs> it's by morning. All right. Let's check it out. <laughs> Let's see if at least the image is where it's meant to be. All right, nice. Let's add a nice image. Uh... Oh, wow. That's the best image. That's, uh, that's how we roll. All right, that's it. Oh, very nice. I can actually see it on my screen as well now. <laughs> uh, that change that you made in my horrible uh, light <laughs> mode studio. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, so <laughs> what's next now with this content then, uh, Cody? Well, um, I've been busy connecting the front end or the storefront. So we have the questions loading in here. They are super ugly. Uh, so the next step <laughs> will be to make it pretty and to use the image. And speaking of what, what it would look like, uh, Kayla, you want to show us your designs that yeah, we'll be implementing? <laughs> um, yeah, so here we nice. have it. Like, yeah, this is the first time everyone's getting to see everything. So big reveal for everyone. Um, mm. Yeah, so we have our kind of splash page, um, your sort of first peek if you happen to kind of go that route um, of the different personality types. Here's how we're gonna format our questions. We're doing it in like a this or that type um, style. And then finally, still under construction, um, sort of the results page, which um, these blocks here will be populated with our amazing products we've also been working on for you all. So it's exciting. Um, yeah, so I guess we'll be ready to launch pretty soon. Um, so that's all from us right now. Uh, Hackathon team out. Okay. <laughs> yep. I sure look forward to buying some of that limited edition swag later today. So there are many ways to create remarkable e-commerce experiences. Often the limiting factor isn't really vision or technology, but it's just sheer content creation time. And as you know, sanity is all about helping teams be more productive, having experiences be more sustainable to maintain. Tom and team has put together this demo showing how you can get the most from your content and deliver a great shopping experiences without killing the content team. Looking forward to it, Tom. Take it away. Thanks, Simon. Uh, I'm Tom, and we're going to talk about e-commerce. Uh, it's a really popular use case for us at Sanity because of how well Sanity composes with other systems like ERPs, warehouse management systems, and commerce platforms. And before working at Sanity, I was in e-commerce and retail for 12 years working with a huge number of brands um, and ambitious retailers always want to provide a, a remarkable shopping experience for their customers. They want to show their products in the best light and tell their stories online and offline. And we love to see retailers layer sanity over their commerce platform of choice to do this. And we see this a lot with, for example, Shopify. And it's so common that we've partnered with Shopify to provide an out of the box integration called Sanity Connect. And the core premise here is that the basic product Product data flows into Sanity from Shopify, and then we can enhance the content models to build amazing experiences and make retailers' lives easier too. And I want to talk about a little bit how that can be done. So let's jump over now to this uh, website homepage here. It's really nice looking, nicely designed homepage. We've got a nice hotspot image here. We've got some products throughout, interlaced with little bits of content. And you might look at this and think there's nothing too remarkable here. 
we can do this with Shopify out of the box. We can do this with another commerce platform out of the box. So why add sanity to this? Well, rich product pages is one thing. Storytelling on every product. So for example, on our Lulu mini pot here, we've got some nice imagery. We've got some product specific content, but we're also starting to interlace content from other places as well. We've got other products tagged throughout. We've got some content about the designer of this product. We've got some content about the materials of this product. We're calling out that it's environmentally friendly. We've got FAQs that are specific to what that product is made from. You can find out how to take care of jesmonite. And this is all done just by tagging a product as being made from that material. So I wanted to take some time to look at how this works. So let's go into Shopify and add a new product. Here's one I made earlier, ready for us to go. So I'll just click save on that to add that into Shopify. And I'll jump over to our Sanity Studio here and we'll see that that product will appear here magically as, as Shopify updates. Uh, we receive that data via our APIs. So when we first get that, we immediately have that data. We've got a product that's been created on our site, but we've just got some basic information there. So let's enhance that. So to start with, I'm just gonna add a little bit of content here. I'm gonna select a color theme. I'm gonna add a, a little bit of, of content. And we can see immediately how that is now rendered on the on the page. We've got a, a description in there, but that's not amazing. Let's start to build out a really exciting experience on this page. So the first thing we might wanna do is add a creator. So this product is designed by Lucy Holberg. So her role on this is a designer. If I publish that and jump back in, we're gonna to start to see that we're building out that page. So we're automatically pulling in the artist image. We've got a link through to see all, all of her work. And let's start to say, you know, about the composition of that product. What is it made from? In this case, it's Jasmineite. And so now we're starting to build out a really interesting layout. We're upselling other products based on, on some criteria of that product. It's Jesmonite. So let's, let's put some other Jesmonite products in front of the customer as well. So let's have a look at some other content types as well and see how this can apply there. So here we've got a guide. It's about transforming coffee tables. This is the kind of content that in my experience is really great for retailers. SEO loves it, you know, it's about thought leadership, but it's not necessarily always easy to convert this into sales. However, if we look at this page, we will see now that the new coaster that we've just added is automatically showing in the context of that page. So how is that? What's happening there? So that is just a list of products with a filter finding any in-stock products matching that filter, and it will make sure that guide's always up to date. Even as the inventory evolves, you get new products in, that will always be updated with the latest. It's so simple in many ways, but really amazing for keeping data and, and, and content real time up to date and putting products that's relevant in front of customers. Another really great example of how we can do this is if we look at these hotspot images within the guide. So we've tagged some products within these images. And we'll notice here that our new coaster that we've added is in here. So let's go into the studio and tag that product within that image and see what happens. So I can jump down here to the images that we've got and open up the product hotspots. And it's as simple as clicking onto that product and assigning the punk coaster. Now, if I jump back to our guide, we'll see now that we've got that product tagged and showing those products in context whilst making sure they're saleable 
is really, really powerful. And I can click through now and I can see that now we've tagged that product in an image as part of a guide, we can see that directly within our product page as well. So that's super, super powerful showing products in context and enabling greater upselling between different products. And I can click through to say, look at the incense burner here. And once again, we'll see that this guide is pulling through there, creating a really nice interface of content. This is all possible in part due to our query language Grok. Then that allows whoever's putting together the storefront to fetch and combine all sorts of bits of content they need straight out of the Sanity Content Lake and implement really completely bespoke ways of navigating and discovering products across your store. And when you create these combinations, you know what we're doing is we're showing that on every relevant product page automatically. And all those product pages are being built with minimal input from editors and they're still creating vivid and interesting experiences. Discovering product is easier, selling products is easier, just from saying it's made from this material and adding a simple bit of markup to an image. It really illustrates in a simple way how powerful the idea of structured content is. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom and team. I love that you also cover composability in there. Uh, composing Sanity with Shopify is really easy and out of the box experience right now, but our customers are composing Sanity with all kinds of things like legacy CMSs, line of business tools, ERP systems. I mean, some quick serve restaurants even feed data from Sanity into tiny operational screens on their cooking equipment in their franchises. Anyway, staying with the theme of maximizing team output in order to achieve remarkable experiences, Simeon and team has put together a demo on marketing pages. As we have seen a lot of companies uh, use Sanity to unstructured content to power visually striking uh, experiences. But the result is often complex authoring and it's less than ideal. Simeon and team wanted to show how, with a little bit of forethought and Sanity V3, authoring content for visually rich experiences can be fast and easy still. So let's see it, Simeon. Thanks, Simon. Yes, I'm Simeon from Solution Engineering. And what we've built here today is an excellent example of building out marketing web pages and much more using Sanity. This is an approach that we know a lot of our customers find great success with in production, where they're building out rich layouts uh, every day and content authors are able to put together many multiple, many marketing pages uh, using structured content. And so this demo that we've got here today is much like many websites that you would see day to day. That is big, rich items of uh, text and images, uh, animations fading in and out. We've got a little sprinkling of structured content throughout as well with this quote and the person, the company they work for. We've got animations with video backgrounds and all of this sort of uh, web pages that you've seen before. But what we often see is that these sorts of layouts require the content author to also play the role of designer. And so this demo that we've created here today takes all of the design decisions away from the content author so that they can focus on just what they do best, content authoring and curation, and all of the design decisions are offloaded to the website itself. So if we have a look at the Sanity Studio that powers this page, uh, this website, we can see here this schema on the left-hand side. I've got those pages where we're orchestrating um, all of those landing page layouts. We have articles, which might be a small atom of content all the way up to an individual standalone page. And those make up those larger landing pages. Then we've got those pieces of structured content there with people, companies, and quotes that power the quotes blocks and the logo blocks there, uh, and a few more metadata items as well. So let's start off by looking at the home page that we just saw there before. And what I can open up to the right-hand side here is a live preview. So as I make changes, I can see those happen in real time. So you can see here that these blocks, they all have the same type. We haven't had to say that this top one is the hero um, and it's because it's the hero type block. It's essentially the hero because it's the first item on the page. If we were to change the order of these items, then suddenly this block becomes the hero item and it's the most prominent uh, member of the page and everything else slips down uh, to adjust. If we move this back up, and what I'll do is just close the preview here and open up that page. So as we make changes to that uh, first article, we'll get to see what they look like in real time. So some examples of those design rules in practice. Uh, say we've got this button here, and the first item 
is always the primary button, but any other buttons that are added to that same array would get secondary treatment. So say a request comes in to add a services uh, link here, we can see how it's styled differently because it is the second one. But if we want to give that the primary branding, then we can drag it to the top because its order in the array is actually the indicator on whether it's the primary item or not. Likewise, this hero should look great whether there's an image or not. We shouldn't have to decide this is one with an image, so put the image on the right and put the text on the left. Instead, if I remove that image, we can see how the hero adapts, the text goes into the center, and it still looks great, um, we, but we haven't had to make that decision um, explicitly from our side. I better go and revert that change because we'll still need that image later. So here's our home page again. And what we've been focusing on at the moment is just what the content looks like in our website. But of course, we can do more than just uh, control the content inside of our website. We can control what our content looks like everywhere else as well. If we link to this page from Twitter or Slack, uh, LinkedIn, we'll get one of these images here, which is typically referred to as open graph images. And in the usual process, you might have to reach out to a designer to have this graphic created. It has to be a certain size. It needs to be relevant, up to date today. But because all this image um, and branding, the company name and the title here, it's all just content, we can develop a system that takes that content from Sanity and generates that image in real time as well. Because we can go beyond just creating websites with Sanity and creating markup, we can create graphics as well. We can create images. So here, if I need to make a change because this image is no longer up to date with our current hero, I can go in and uh, look through the uploaded images I can find that same one that's in the hero there. I can even crop that one to make sure that uh, the focal point is exactly where I want it to be in this social share graphic. Uh, could be a bit to the side. A bit further. There we go. Perfect. So we're creating graphics and we're creating content to display perfectly, not only on our website, but on everybody else's as well. And we're in full control of that from this single document. If we have a look at some of these other pages, you can see how we could create many landing pages just like these. And actually something I'd like to focus on was those quote blocks. So let's go back over to here uh, and have a look at this quote. This quote is a piece of structured content because it, again, it's not a block in the home page. It is a quote. It is its own individual slice of content. It is reference to a person. A person is reference to a company. That company has a logo that we saw in the logos block there before. So all of this network of structure, structured content content that we've created creates the layouts that we showed in the front end there before. And again, um, if we have this in such a way where we're using references instead of individual pieces of text in pages at a point in time, um, you know, if this quote needed to be adapted or changed um, in some systems, you'd need to do a find and replace in many places. But instead, we can just edit this once and we know that everywhere it's used, it will be updated. And again, we can do sorts of clever things like to be able to create social share graphics so we can take this graphic or a video even and send that off into other networks. Let's take a look at another landing page. This is the platform page, which once again has a nice big hero here. It has some quotes and a few small pieces of content, uh, which are product features or the like. But again, because we know that each one of these small columns here are actually really rich pieces of content, we can see how this is going to adapt as well. So if we were to move this quote here, say, uh, in between two articles, we can see how the layout adapts. Now I have those sales features there, and I have a quote there instead. If I move the quote in between them, we'll see how the layout adapts as well. And we end up with these larger, richer pieces of uh, text um, exposing more of that article's detail. For now, we've been focusing on content at this point in time. But say something time sensitive comes into play and we need to put that onto a few pages as well. So for example, we know that there's a festival coming up. And if we have a look at this, I'm gonna add a new block, the Cinematic Dreams Festival. I'm gonna move this up into the top spot here. Uh, now this is great. We've got a special offer coming up next month, but we don't want to display this when the festival's not on. We want it just for that week of the festival. What we can do is jump over to that article and I've added a few fields to this document to say um, when this document should be shown. And this will be written into the query that the web page is populated with. And if we say, well, this event is only taking place from the 1st of January until uh, the 7th of January, say, and publish those changes, 
if we go back here, we can see that that actually takes place in the future. And we can see that that block has now been removed from the website. So that's great. We should know that it's going to appear at that point in time, but it would still really be nice to be able to see that in a live preview while we make changes. Fortunately, we can influence the live preview as well to say, show me what that's going to look like during the event cycle. And here that block comes into play again. What we can also do is make sure that there's not two competing priorities on the page. And I'm going to take this one here, this visibility, and I'm only going to show that until the 31st of December. So now I can see from my editor and from my live preview that this is a block that will be shown in the future, and this is the block that is going to be shown in the present. So I know that if I query for this page right now, what I'll see, but I can also influence the live preview to show uh, different times and different audiences for A-B tests and experiments uh, to be able to know what the website will look like at any point in time and to any audience. So that's what our content operations look like in this marketing demo. And this is great as our startup Enigma is a, is a small uh, one market only business. But what if the company grows? Well, everything we've created here was also designed to scale. Imagine as we move out to multiple markets and expand globally, we might need to serve the same shapes of content to different markets and not only different markets, but different languages as well. So the Canadian homepage is being built out here, but we'll need to actually have different translations for those too. So we've created a multi-market, multilingual uh, content structure that will scale uh, for individual markets, for content authors that are only concerned on specific markets, but also we can get global visibility um, across the entire stack to be able to see all content in all regions at all times. Uh, so that's a marketing demo. Uh, I'd love to uh, see what you think. Thanks. Wow. That was amazing, Simon. Uh, it turns out it's pretty hard to explain that idea of these rule-based design systems. I think more companies and people should really try it out. Like it really helps uh, with your velocity, your ability to get stuff out, and then you can leverage, like you said, all of these things like A/B testing, personalization. You can have this huge volume of pages in the marketing stack. So, I mean, really think through like. Is there a place in my business where I need these kind of rule-based systems where I can work faster? Please consider it. Anyway, amazing. I think our hackathon team is getting ready to launch, hopefully. Yeah, so we're just finishing up here. Um, so we've uploaded our final product here into Printful. Um, and then we've essentially composed three services. So first we start in Printful for yeah, uploading the products. Then we go over to Shopify where they're handling all the transaction details for us. So you can see those products listed there as well. And then finally, we hop over into our studio where we're organizing all of our content. Um, you can see here in our collection, we have the different categories for our quiz results. Um, yeah, and then Lydia will tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, of course. Um, let me just share my screen. All right. Um, essentially, we're trying to move fast. We are a composable hackathon team composing stuff together to move quickly. Um, the studio is set up so that we can add new personality tests and categories in the future. So we can see the quiz here. Great. So fun doing stuff live. We can see the quiz <laughs> here. Um, we've got the title, we've got all of the questions with a little bit of an image um, and the scoring system. And from this point on, we could add more personality tests, we could add more products, we could connect to an entirely different service if, you, if we wanted to. Um, and I think that's really cool. Even though it's just a bit of a throwaway project, this is gonna be gone in 48 hours. It's actually built on a solid foundation that could grow if we decided to double down. That's kind of a theme we hear people talk about, how sanity helps you get started really fast, but then you're not really held back either. Uh, the platform kind of scales with you. Uh, but this is it for now. And uh, Cody, are we uh, ready to go live? We're already live. It's already out there. OK. Uh, Simon, will you do the honors and, uh, and make the first purchase in our new store let's see that's uh that's amazing that's uh that's a quick turnaround time so let's see let's bring in uh 
my browser here. So I think the URL, it's was it swag dot sanity dot build. Let's see. So I'm thinking. So my the next section now we're gonna do the deep dive with the developers. So I think maybe we could bring in our celebrity developer relations uh, specialist, Cap and Knut. Hey. Hi, everyone. How are you? Good. I think maybe we could test one of you and see what kind of team personality you are. Who want to go? I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Oh. Oh, I'm trying to click my video screen. I should click the browser. Let's see here. Here we go. OK, so are you a leader or a follower? I'll say leading. Leading. Do you prefer people or pets? Oh my gosh, this is a hard. Um, <laughs> I'll say pets. I pets. got five of them. I like my pets. So a new restaurant or the usual spot? Usual spot, for sure. Usual spots, for sure. And then do you prefer perfect or done? Done. Done. Painting all your walls white. Look at me. Or painting all your walls pink. <laughs> um, I'm going to say painting all your walls white because then you can change out the artwork on it. And that's what I is, like. Is she going to go white or pink? Yeah. White. 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 Okay, I'll follow a recipe or create a new dish. Follow a recipe. Follow a recipe. Uh, read the instructions or figure it out as you go. Read the instructions. I read instructions. Read word for word, I key instructions. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have those right instructions. Like that's it's, 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 it's kind of uh, honor bound to. So, how how no pistachio ice cream or vanilla ice cream? Uh, vanilla. Vanilla. Like, yeah. White vanilla. walls and vanilla ice cream. That's uh, that's relatable. <laughs> going out or going to see a movie? Going to dinner or going to see a movie? Dinner. I don't know what that sure. would tell about you. Dinner for sure. Mm -hmm. Turning into a cat or turning into a dog. A cat. A cat, of course. You want to be independent. You are the human encyclopedia. <laughs> you are the one like you knows everything. And your favorite Silent Studio feature will be the the filter, the the, the new search, the more new powerful mm. search. Okay. Yeah. Let's see your your swag. Like you can now buy this kind of bespoke swag specifically for the human encyclopedia. What 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 what, what takes your fancy I, here? Let's buy one of those. I like this. I like the. I like the notebook and I also like the t-shirt. I like that t-shirt a lot. You want all of these. So let's just, uh, let's see if we can, can we go back and we, can we just buy them from that page? Kind of add them to like a, it's pretty, yeah, quick ad. So you can get both that one and, oh, and also you can get the t-shirt. Quick ads. Oh, this is all just, I think Aqua and Shopify together. And actually now I can just check out I'll I'll put in the payment details off screen. So, but uh, that's pretty amazing. So this is uh, open for everyone, and I think I, I'm kind of re relieved that you like this uh, cap because it's kind of your job, right? This is yeah. kind of bootleg <laughs> swag. Wait, wait, yeah. this this isn't just a demo. This is real. Is this live now? Like everyone here can like uh, go and buy these, and uh, we will ship them. I think we had to maybe mark the prices up a bit to to make sure we can cover shipping. But if we make any profit, we'll make sure to donate all of that to a charity. It's like we're not going to, of course, make any money here. It's just that we couldn't figure out the calculation of the of the what's it called the shipping fees, the different taxes around the world. So we just kind of had like a, a blanket fee. But apart from that, is it? Is it harder to figure out the taxes than to make a real-time content workspace? Clearly. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing what is hard uh, as opposed but, to what's yeah, easy right now. But this wasn't sanctioned by, by the, our official swag manager, Cap, was it? I know, but I am kind of a fan of it. So I guess maybe one slide. <laughs> You let it slide. Yeah, I, I, I'm, we're planning to take this down in 48 hours. Like now, you're gonna make this permanent. Uh, let's see. Let's see. We will have a. This is not the right meeting for that. I'm guessing, right? Like we're gonna have a forum yeah. for that. So, yeah, amazing. Okay, that's Simon out. I'll leave it to you. I'm looking forward to this. I haven't seen any of what you planned, so I'm gonna get myself a cup of tea and just sit back and have fun. Mm -hmm.